So it turns out that the day after I released a video on subsurface scattering in Sheen in version 4.0, they made some further user interface changes. So I want to talk about that, but I'd also like to talk about some comments that were made about the subsurface radius function as it relates to using an RGB node. And I also want to show what happens when you open in 4.0, a 3.6 material that contains an RGB node attached to the subsurface color parameter that is now gone in 4.0. So first off, let's take a look at the fact that the build that they just released has new organizational features in the material editor, and they're awesome. I didn't show the node editor in the first video because they were making changes to it, and I wasn't sure if they were going to be making further edits or changes, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So you can see that they have panels now in the principled BSDF. If they didn't do that, it would be such a long and complex node that they just wanted to put in these sections that could be expanded or contracted. It's really logical. But now what they've done, they just released a build today that further incorporated this into the regular material editor. So when we come over here, we can see that the core functions are at the top, and then we have subsections for, say, subsurface scattering, or for specular, you know, coat, for instance. This just makes it so much easier to parse through since they're in logical regions that you can expand and contract. Let's take a look now at using an RGB node to drive the subsurface radius. A couple of people made some comments that why don't we just drive that with, say, an RGB node as opposed to simple scalar values. So let's take a look at that. We'll come down here to subsurface, and we've got the subsurface radius with these three scalar values, which allows you to attenuate the depth of each of those channels relative to the scale value. We come over to the node editor, press Shift A to add, and you're going to note first off in 4.0, they've removed the search function. What happens now is you just simply type in what you want to search for. So we have RGB node. You don't have to specifically click on a search entry to get that. So now what we do is we come over and we've got, I've got 1.0 for each of these, and I want to come over to RGB. Let's say we want blue to be the primary emphasis. So I'm going to take red and green, take those to zero, blue up to one, and then I drive this into the radius. So let's go ahead and turn on subsurface. And there we go. Because the values are there. When you, when you come over to RGB, the scalar values are right there. So they drive that. But here's the cool part. When we come back over to the main material editor, when you expand out this entry, we now have the color values there. So you can just come over and make changes to your subsurface color. If you disconnect the RGB node, then it simply goes back to the standard scalar functions for radius. So let's take a look at what happens when we take this 3.6 material and move it over to 4.0, because we have an RGB node that's driving subsurface color. And remember, subsurface color is no longer available in 4.0. So how do they handle this condition? Let's jump over to 4. Let's open this up. Let's turn on the interactive renderer so we can see it. So it's pretty close. It's not exactly the same. When we look at this, we can see that there's the RGB node that we had, but now it's tied into a, a mixed color node. It's taken the base color, put it into A, the RGB node into B, and those are both being driven into base color. When we look at subsurface entries, the entries here, the radius values are the same, and it's converted over that 0.5 nebulous value that we had in 3.6 into the proper equivalent of the unit system that we're using over here in 4.0. So it's, it's doing something that's pretty close, but it's not quite exactly the same. So this is something you're probably just going to have to experiment a little bit with once you begin using 4.0 to see if you need to make any tweaks or whether you're just going to be able to use it as is.